Namaskar, hello and welcome viewers. You're watching the special presentation of Sunset TV, The Amendments. As we celebrate Azadi Kamrit Mohotsev, marking 75 years of independence, we need to pause and reflect upon the landmark amendments to the Constitution that have shaped our country. And today, we'll take a closer look at the Constitution, Eighth Amendment Act of 1959. The opening and last sentences of the preamble, we, the people, adopt, enact, and give to ourselves this constitution signifies the power is ultimately vested in the hands of the people. The constitution of a country is the fundamental law of governance. It guarantees dignified existence to all its citizens within the legal framework. We have had the benefit of a galaxy of visionaries who were definitive about the path we should chart out for ourselves and were fully conscious of the enormity of the task involved in drafting the constitution for a newborn nation. So far, as the ultimate goal is concerned, I think none of us need have any apprehensions. None of us need have any doubt. But my fear, which I must express clearly, is this. Our difficulty, as I said, is not about the ultimate future. Our difficulty is how to make the heterogeneous mess that we have today take a decision in common and march in a cooperative way on that road which is bound to lead us to unity. It is due to their sagacity and statesmanship that special provisions for amendment to the constitution were incorporated in the constitution. These provisions enable Parliament to amend the Constitution periodically to meet the changing needs of the time. In our Constitution, Parliament has been empowered to amend any provision in compliance with the procedure laid down in Article 368. Insofar as the constituent power to make formal amendments is concerned, it is Article 368 of the Constitution of India which empowers Parliament to amend the Constitution by way of addition, variation or repeal of any provision according to the procedure laid down therein, which is different from the procedure for ordinary legislation. The positive outcome of such amendments is evident from the provisions like insertion of equal justice and free legal aid, advancement of socially and educationally backward classes, a separate chapter on fundamental duties of the citizens, lowering of the voting age from 21 to 18 years, insertion of nine schedule inclusion of 10 schedule, safeguarding the political process against defection, strengthening democracy at the grassroots level, with reservation for women, by way of inclusion of 11th and 12th schedules. All these changes have significantly contributed towards building an egalitarian society. The Indian Constitution was enforced in 1950, and in the very next year, an amendment was introduced. The Act amended the Indian Constitution even before the first elections were held in independent India. There were three fundamental changes made in the constitution through this amendment. It gave ways to limit freedom of speech and expression, supported measures to abolish the zamindari system and made it clear that the right to equality does not preclude passing laws that give particular consideration to society's most vulnerable groups. The amendment paved way for the reservation in India to mitigate lost opportunities due to the practice of caste discrimination in India. The reservations are a part of India's affirmative action initiative after independence that assured scheduled castes, scheduled tribes and other backward classes' representation in key areas like education or government employment. The Constitution First Amendment Act of 1951 gives power to the state to make special provisions for the advancement of socially and economically backward classes. Article 15 was amended and by virtue of Constitution First Amendment Act 1951, Clause 4 was added to the Article 15, which allowed the state to make reservations for the scheduled castes and scheduled tribes in educational institutions. Reservations were also put in place in the Indian Constitution immediately after independence as means to recognize the historical injustice meted out to people belonging to backward groups and to implement provisions 
by which they would have better access to resources and opportunities. Reservations in India were introduced to rectify the past and historical injustice against the backward classes and castes in India, to ensure that equal representation can be given to people belonging from different strata of the society, and to provide an equal platform for everyone, irrespective of their caste, to promote and advance the backward classes. When the period of 10 years, as originally envisaged in Article 334 of the Constitution was to expire, it was felt that the reservation need to be continued in the interest of the scheduled caste, scheduled tribe and Anglo-Indian communities. These communities must continue to have their voice in the legislature as they have historically been silenced for a long time. Therefore, by the 8th Constitution Amendment, the period was extended from 10 years to 20 years. And as all of us know, every 10 years, the provision was reviewed by the Parliament and after the 8th Amendment, by 24th Amendment, 45th Amendment, 62nd Amendment, 79th Amendment, 95th Amendment and 104th Amendment of the Constitution, the time was extended again, uh, the Constitution was again amended and the existing provision of reservation in favor of scheduled caste and scheduled tribes in the Lok Sabha and State Legislative Assembly will now continue. Article 334 of the Constitution lays down that the provisions of the Constitution relating to the reservation of seats for the scheduled castes and scheduled tribes and the representation of the Anglo-Indian community by nomination in the House of the People and the Legislative Assemblies of the States shall cease to have effect on the expiration of a period of 10 years from the commencement of the Constitution. Although the scheduled castes and scheduled tribes made progress in the last 10 years, the reasons which weighed with the Constituent Assembly in making provision for the aforesaid reservation of seats and nomination of members had not ceased to exist. It was therefore proposed to continue the reservation and the representation for a further period of 10 years. In extending the period of nomination of members of the Anglo-Indian community, it was proposed to fix a number of such members who might be nominated by governors to state assemblies and an amendment of Article 333 was accordingly proposed. The Constitution 8th Amendment Bill 1959 was introduced in the Lok Sabha in 1959. It was introduced by Pandit Govind Ballapant, then Minister of Home Affairs, and sought to amend Articles 333 and 334 of the Constitution. The Constitution 8th Amendment Bill 1959 was introduced in the Lok Sabha on 16th of November 1959. The bill sought to amend Articles 333 and 334 of the Constitution. The bill was considered by the Lok Sabha on 30th of November and 1st of December and with the omission of Clause 2 passed on 1st of December 1959. The bill as passed by the Lok Sabha was considered and passed by the Rajya Sabha on 7 December 1959. During consideration of the bill by the Lok Sabha, the motion for the adoption of Clause 2, which sought to amend Article 333 of the Constitution, was lost as it was not carried by a majority of the total membership of the House. The said clause was therefore omitted from the bill. Clause 3 of the bill, seeking amendment of Article 334, was adopted in the original form by the Lok Sabha on 1st of December 1959. It was renumbered as Clause 2 and adopted by the Rajya Sabha on 7 December 1959. In fact, Part 16 of the Constitution makes special provision relating to certain classes. Article 330 to 334 in the said part make provision for reservation in favor of scheduled castes, scheduled tribes and Anglo-Indians in the Lok Sabha and in the state legislative assemblies. Article 334 as originally incorporated provided that this reservation will cease after 10 years. 
these provisions were incorporated with a view to ensure that marginalized communities had say in the government and interest of these communities are appropriately represented in the legislative bodies. By making these provisions, the constitution framers had tried to address the centuries old injustice meted out to these communities. The act amended Article 334 of the Constitution in order to provide for the extension of reservation of seats for the scheduled castes and scheduled tribes and representation of the Anglo-Indians in the House of People and State Legislative Assemblies for another 10 years. The bill after ratification by the states received assent from then President Dr. Rajin Prasad on 5th of January 1960 and came into force the same day. It was notified in the Gazette of India on 6th of January 1960. The reservation was initially meant for a period of 10 years after adoption of the constitution in 1950. However, extension of this reservation from time to time was considered to be a necessity to give these marginalized communities better opportunity to participate in the political process and have their say in legislative process. Each constitution has some technique for alteration whereby the provisions are changed by method of expansion, rectification or revision in order to suit the requirements of the present. The framers of Indian constitution were aware that the changes would be needed in the constitution from time to time. Thus, the provisions for the amendment of the constitution were made in order to defeat the difficulties which may arise in future. The authors of the constitution wanted to have a bit flexible constitution and they wanted to avoid extreme rigidity in the constitution of India. They wanted to have the constitution which could develop with the developing nations and which could change with the changing needs of the people of India. The success of Indian constitution for a country as diverse and complex as India continues to intrigue, impress and inspire experts around the world. Well viewers, with that it's a wrap from my side. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to Sunset TV. Goodbye for now from my side.